hard hat came out last year um, with morbidly good timing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't you rush it for? I mean, was it a deal? Did you have <laughs> <laughs> profit and loss? No. Um, uh, it was a, it was a real shock. I mean, I think people knew it was going to kind of come. It was happening, um, and and. I, you know, I had thought about it. I'd spent a lot of time thinking about her impact on my life and all of this. But, but when it did happen, it was still a shock. And it did remind me of when my granny died, actually, um, because it was somebody who was older, who you always thought was going to be there. Um, and then they were gone, and you just kind of thought, well, what now? And we've laughed about her, and she is a, a kind of a, a figure that we're not very fond of in Scotland. But in a funny kind of way, she did inspire you. I mean, she was partly responsible for you making it and getting out. So, Unpack that complexity for us. Well, I mean, the first, you know, the, at the beginning of the book, I talk about the, the Brighton bombing and her emerging mm -hmm. from that. And um, somebody yesterday played me a clip of that moment. And there is this incredible determination and strength of character. She will not be defeated. You know, and I remember my parents being like, why? Why won't she die? Why? What will it take? You know, and, and, I, and I kind of, at this point, felt sorry for her. I felt sorry for her because everybody hated her. She was blamed for absolutely everything. And I thought, well, you know, I did, as I said, she'd not done anything to me. Very simplistic logic of a child. Of course, later on I came to understand just what impact her policies did have on me and, and the community that I'm from. But, um, you know, the book is not political in that way. I'm not, in, I'm not like, you know, I'm not a young, it's not a political ingenue. I'm not William Hague or something like that. Um, but, but, but insofar as she impacted on my life, you know, that, that was then. And I felt sorry for her. Um, and she was interesting. She was glamorous as well. There was a kind of sort of um, dynasty via Surrey kind of <laughs> aspect to her, um, which was quite interesting. And yeah, so I, I could see she was she was attractive in a strange way. Mm. Let, let's go to the other extreme because while it's not misery lit, it's not mislit your book. There no, is a lot of grimness in it, and, and Logan was a monster. Oh. Um, that, and he could have killed you. Tell us about that, because I mean, if you haven't read the book, there's some really devastating abuse and assaults, um, uh, which your mother didn't know about. She wasn't there. She was away. Yeah. So tell us about that. I mean, um, because it's you've entertained us, but but there's a darkness in the book too. There is. Um, there is a darkness, and you know, it's a darkness that's that's in my life as well. You know. Um, but no, my mum my mom had a brain hemorrhage and she nearly died and she was taken away to hospital to Glasgow Southern General and she was away for a long, long time, you know, months and months and months and months and she was in that time learning to read and write and walk and talk again and I have huge respect for my mum. She's an incredibly strong woman um, and very loving. Um, but while I, I, my dad didn't have custody because men didn't get custody then, that just wasn't even a question. And he was very busy working in the Ravenscraig trying to keep it open. Um, and so we were left with this, this man who, you know, who kind of ignored my sister for the most part, um, but who hated me, mm -hmm. absolutely despised me, um, and who basically tortured me for, for, for years uh, in different ways, um, mentally and physically and, and lots of ways. And it's this thing of... Um, I thought that it was something, my behaviour, you know, I was clanking my spoon on my bowl, I had, or I had asked for second portions, or I was late home from school, or I was up late reading my book again, or whatever terrible thing it was that I had done. And this, and, and he, I think, enjoyed the sensation that I was afraid. And the rules were constantly shifting, and of course, there is no rule that a child could break that would justify an adult, you know, almost drowning them in the bath. Um, but as a child, you take that on board, and I very much did, and so as a consequence, was an incredibly well-behaved child. Mm -hmm. um, but no matter how well-behaved I was, you know, he still hated me. And it's a curious, but quite pure sensation to be totally despised like that. Mm -hmm. it, did, you do, it is quite clear, and, you, uh, and I hope that it never happens to you, but it is very uh, uh, clear-eyed to be, you know that somebody hates you. Have you heard whether he's heard about the book, read the book? I have no interest in anything. I, have, yeah. I, I would be surprised if he'd read it. 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had read it, if he denied all knowledge of any of it or said that it was nothing to do with him. Or, or what, but, you know, I long ago stopped thinking about what he thought about me. Yeah. Um, I had to detach from that because I think you go mad mm. thinking, mm. What, why is it that bad people do bad mm. things? You know, you endlessly sort of look to yourself and it's not me, it's him. He made these choices and they're nothing to do with me. So, so I, 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 I don't know if he knows why he did those things. I don't, I don't know. You said you're having to get protection for a gig you're doing in Motherwell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just normal. That's just Motherwell. <laughs> <laughs> that's just any gay man going to Motherwell. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, um, so you, you don't think he's anything to do with that? I don't know. I, I just, I'm just aware that, that, um, that there are people who want to you know, cause trouble yeah. and, and, um, yeah. and I, I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so arrangements have been made to make sure that, that I'm safe. Another very moving thing about the book is your obvious love for your parents. Who let you down? Mm. How have they um, reacted to the book? I mean, they're still in your life. Yes, they are. They must be as proud as hell of you and what you've achieved. Um, but they must also have read your book with a certain amount of um, guilt and sadness. Have they spoken about it? Well, my dad hasn't read it. My dad's, my dad's not the world's biggest reader. So, um, so, although he did tell me that he'd read about it in the Daily Mail. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so that, that was not the issue. Um, excuse me. Um, so my dad had read that, and, um, and my dad said, he said, um, it was very lovely, actually. He said, if I'd, he said, if I'd known um, then what I know now, he said, your life would have been different. Um, and, and my mum has not read all of it. it I think finds it too painful um, to, to, to do. But I don't, you know, I don't hold any malice against my parents. You know, they did the best that they could. All right, they made mistakes and they were feckless at times and, 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 and maybe self-absorbed in and, and other ways and other moments. But they had their own lives to be getting on with. And I don't know how well I would have behaved in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I'll tell you this, I have never not felt loved by my parents. I have always felt loved by my parents. And I do think that gives you a kind of force field for whatever else goes on in your life, whatever else life throws at you. If you, you had that, and I did have a good, you know, seven, eight years of my parents being together and them being in love mm -hmm. and me seeing them in love and them loving me. So, you know, I think that stood me in good stead for the stuff that had happened after. I do think that my parents find me odd. I think that my parents don't... My dad sometimes calls me the cuckoo. Um, Where did and, you come from? And they kind, of, they kind of look at me sometimes like, oh, you know. And um, you know, I, 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 got, I got married um, last summer to my, to my partner. And we've been together for, you know, it will be 20 years in January. So I met him when I was in my first year at university. Because obviously I'm incredibly young. Um, and, um, and my parents were there at the wedding. You know, and, it was, and that was great. You know, they, they were very happy. There's a bit in the book, Damien, um, when I read it, I thought it was turning me into a Tory. Um, well. <laughs> it's, it's the bit, it's your description of the nights your mother and her then boyfriend and her pals, when they got the weekly gyro and mm. aroused all, all night. Um, I mean, it goes on, it is horrifying. Mm. It's not being handled well by the current Westminster government, but there is a problem. I mean, tell us a little bit about the effect of that on you as a wee boy and how we deal with it. I mean, it, it's a story of getting the gyro and boozing it away mm -hmm. virtually overnight. Well, I did recently write, actually, about, about Buckfast for The Guardian, because mm -hmm. um, Buckfast is a key ingredient in this horror story. I read the piece. Um, yeah, and, um, you, you know, I don't, you know, you don't blame the gun, you blame, you know, you blame the hand to pose the trigger, whatever. Of course, people have to take responsibility, but I do think that's a particularly dangerous substance that's designed to cause harm. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, yeah, I mean, every Wednesday night, you know, people would cash their, cash their books um, and there would be, you'd go from kind of famine to feast, you know, there would be, there would be chinkies ordered and there would be karyots and all the rest of it and there would be party for a few days until the money ran out mm -hmm. and then not really any thought about what would happen mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, and it was horrible, I hated it. As a consequence, I spent most of my time at my, um, at my girlfriend's house, mm -hmm. at Heather's house, um, when her parents kind of, you know, did a lot of feeding and taking care of me. And also a lot of time in libraries, um, 
you know, I spent an awful lot of time in, in, in libraries, and this current debate, you know, feels odd saying this in a library, but, but about, um, you know, it's a very kind of middle class dominated, you know, agenda about how enriching libraries are, and it's true, of course, they are wonderful. Um, but uh, fundamentally, a library is a warm, dry, safe space where nobody is trying to kill you, usually. <laughs> you know, and that is a kind of unstated benefit. Um, and I did a library tour last year. I, I, it was one of the very good things that my publisher, Bloomsbury, had arranged for me. And, um, and I went to some really rough libraries. I mean, properly people shooting up in the toilets, you know, people really rough libraries. And it was incredible because these librarians were like social workers and, and I just thought what a service they were doing. It was amazing. So, and then the, the other place that I spent time was, you know, various evangelical Christian groups. Um, go figure. You know. And Carfin Grotto features as well, but I want, I want you to tell us a wee... Disneyland for Catholics. Disneyland for Catholics. It's still there. Um, you had some wonderful teachers. I mean, that school you went to, I mean, I don't know what it looks like from outside. You probably wouldn't please Mr. Go. No. But my God, they did wonders for you, didn't they? My teachers, I had some incredible, incredible teachers. Yeah. Um, and I'm very lucky mm -hmm. to have had them in, in my life and my education. And they did so much to help me personally and to keep me in school and keep me motivated. And, and you know, uh, they, were, they were great, you, you know, they did all kinds of things. I remember you know, when I went to university, it was those two teachers who bought me my first set of pots and pans and towels and all of mm -hmm. this, which I, by the way, not even thought that I would need, mm -hmm. you know. And so they and they were they were like, right, trip to IKEA for you. Um, and so and they and they also were at my wedding last. They were wonderful. Um, they weren't always wonderful. There was a moment where I, when I came out to one of them, she took it very badly. Mm -hmm. And she did not want this for me. And, you know, to be fair, I had not wanted it for me either. Um, but it was for me, um, and that was that. And so, uh, um, but she was not supportive at the time. Mm. And I wrote about that. And, um, and actually at the wedding, she said how awful it was to read this mm. because it, it was true. Mm. And she apologised, mm. which was just this amazing thing where I had not been bearing a grudge. But it was just—it was, was a moment of loveliness, of light, and you know, and that's so that's a nice thing that had come out of it. I don't expect the great teachers, you know, can save save a child. <coughs> Tell us about your Catholic granny and, and oh, my and, granny man and, and, and Carfin. Do you know where Carfin is? It's, it's a wonderful. Um, uh, it's hard to believe that it exists. You try and explain it to people, and they're like, really. You know, but it's amazing, and I loved it, and I used to go there all the time. I used because it was it was on my way home from school, and so I used to go there to avoid going home. And I would hang out in the gift shop, and the lovely lady who worked there um, would tell me the sto all the stories about all the medals and all the saints, and give me marshmallows when I got things right, um, and um, and sort of slightly lo you know looks when I got it wrong. So, and the very first of course person she told me it was about Father Damien and the lepers. <coughs> And, you know, we, and we went on from there. You've got a great name. Yep, got, got name. is a great name. So, and, um, and so she was getting, so I used to love going there, and, I, and it, was, it was exciting. Yeah. And it was weird, because you, know, you were standing in the grotto, and then there was Raven's Keg in the background, and you mm -hmm. could see it in the BOC yeah. plant and all the rest of it. It wasn't exactly romantic, but, um, but I did love it. When did you know you were gay? I, just, I, I, th I think um, I felt different from other kids for a very long time. Mm -hmm. For as long as I can remember, I felt different. And I thought that was for all kinds of other reasons, mm -hmm. um, like have my, being a mixed marriage, like having mm -hmm. a Catholic mum and a Protestant dad, which people pointed out all the time. Um, uh, being very tall, I thought, you know, that was odd. Um, I had really bad buck teeth. Um, my parents got divorced. There were all kinds of reasons mm -hmm. that I felt weird. Um, and, and it was really only when boys started to call me names mm -hmm. um, that I thought, what is, what is this? And I remember again, it was that very, that feeling, that feeling of being really hated and not knowing why mm. people hated you. And running into my mum and saying, mum, what, what's a poof? Mm. And her saying to me, you don't have to worry about that. And not saying it's not true, but you know, you don't have to worry about it. And then saying, who told me? Right, point them out, I'm gonna go and get them. You know, so you, know, so you wouldn't mess. So, and um, and so, so, so I think probably, you know, that was, that was definitely before, you know, it was about eight, nine when that started to happen. Um, and then followed, you know, many, many years of confusion and, and fear. 
And you had another gay friend in Mark whose story was very different. And you write very movingly about that. Yeah. You've found the resilience, the courage from somewhere to, to be yourself and to grow and to get out. Um, tell us about that, because you went back and spoke at his funeral. Yes. Um, I don't want to say too much about that for people who haven't read the book. Um, but um, it's a... It's a situation of, it's, I suppose it's the road less travelled, mm -hmm. um, you know, not in the original sense, but in, in the sense that we understand it now. Um, and, um, you know, he was a friend who was born at, within weeks of me, who, whose parents went to the same school, got married and divorced at the same time. Very clever, very athletic, um, and who, you know, who is dead. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture in the book of me and two boys from my class at primary school and I'm the only boy left alive in that picture. And that makes, that is very, that is heartbreaking to me, um, that picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, round things up for us, um, uh, but your parents, your sister Tini, your best pal Heather, how are they all doing? So people always ask that, it's a weird thing, I'm like, how's your mum? You know, and I'm like, she's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but they're great. I mean, my, my, my sister is, um, is no longer teeny, she's, she's big, she's tall, and, um, and she's very well, and she's, she, she works, um, she's very senior in one of, one of our uh, emergency services, and so she's great. My wee brother has got two kids, um, and he's very happy, and my mum is, is well. She turned 60 last year. She gets her and my dad have a coffee once a week now. <laughs> you know, that's nice. Um, he has his own jar, his own coffee jar that he brings over. Um, and um, Heather's, Heather's a, a teacher. She's a teacher now, and a brilliant teacher as well. She's a great teacher. So, so um, it makes me sound like I'm really not very good at letting go, doesn't it? It's like I'm really, all these people are still, still there, but you know, I've kept the really, the really great people still in my life. And Mark, who isn't alive anymore, it's still very much a part of my life. I do think of him a lot, and he is still here. The book's had a, a terrific reception, and it's not over yet, so you've got some exciting no, to tell us about them. No, it's, good. it's being adapted to be a TV series. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really exciting. And you so, get to play yourself? I, can cool. you imagine? Like Nigel Slater did. Um, so it's a, <laughs> no, uh, I think I'll find some precocious drama school child that can be me, even more precocious than I was. Um, so yeah, no, so it's going to be a, 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 it, was, it was a book of the week and I really loved it yeah. on the radio and it's going to be a, it's going to be a, t a TV series as well. Um, and I'm, and I'm next couple of weeks I'll be off to America to do a tour there and, yeah. and Canada as well. So it's really exciting. It, it, is, it has been a... I can't tell you how, how much it's changed my life and how extraordinary it is. One of the things I love the most about it is getting to meet people and hearing their stories. Because they're extraordinary stories. And you know this when you mm -hmm. go and do sunnies and you talk to people. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. you know? And some of the stuff people tell me, I think, actually, I had a... I had a I had it lucky, you know, some of the things you Well, that's because you're a lovely guy, David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for that. Mm -hmm.